Next up, we have Jean-Baptiste in Paris reporting on the Citroën Ami. Hi, Zach and Jesse. Today I'm reporting from Paris, where I've been invited by Citroën to test drive the new Ami, and later I'll be able to have a chat with one of their spokesperson. So let's get to it. We were scheduled to meet at the Cercle Le Brun, the painter's mansion built in 1700, right in the heart of Paris. And I've got to say, Citroën really did a good job decorating the place. There were multiple sitting areas, with panels on easels, with detailed info about the car. And they also had all the Ami goodies on display. Then we were treated to a short presentation and off we went for the test drive. When I stepped back inside the ME for the test drive, I was again struck by the sense of space that you get, no doubt due to all the windows and the skylight. The acceleration of the ME is good, but I still felt it didn't totally match my expectation for an electric vehicle. The car also noticeably lacks power steering, but since it's also designed to be used by teenagers, I can understand parents not wanting to have the car accelerate like crazy or turn with the smallest nudge on the steering wheel. The absence of a rear view mirror and of a self-cancelling feature for the blinker were a bit more annoying, although not really a deal breaker for me. For this part of the day, Citroën provided us with a cell phone with a pre-established GPS route that took us around Paris through various landmarks, providing us with great photo ops. Driving the ME, even on narrow Parisian streets, sometimes felt like you were driving on a two-lane road, even though you actually were not. The ME definitely shares the space with other mobility solutions, and I wouldn't be scared riding my bike alongside one. All in all, I had a pretty enjoyable time aboard the ME, and pretty soon the course was over and it was time to do the interview. Our intention is not to be like a car, it's to be like a urban mobility object. But even if we are in the same category as the VSP, uh, we have uh, thought and worked on a vehicle which is not a VSP. We don't want to copy uh, the small cars. We want uh, another concept. Uh, you mentioned that VSP are popular for older people. We want to take the opportunity of the license-free ability to ride AMI to attract uh, those young customers as well. And the modernity for us uh, related to AMI is one of the things that make us um, far from the VSP universe. AMI is not a French car. First, it's not a car. As I said, it's more like a urban mobility object. And then, uh, even if it has been uh, designed and uh, thought initially in France, it's uh, supposed to be sold all across Europe. Uh, light quadricycles are quite popular for young customers in Italy. And we are really thinking that there is a, a market for this new kind of concept of vehicle uh, all across Europe and maybe later in other regions. AMI, as we think it is, is not only designed to be purchased as a classical car. So we are proposing a uh, possibility to use it one hour, one day, one month. So we want to develop some kind of a la carte offers to answer the different needs of the customers. And uh, to answer your question about free to move, 
We really think AMI is a great asset to develop car sharing operations. AMI is born for the city, for the small trips, for uh, short usages. And uh, I think that's also the ambition for car sharing in the big cities. And the free to move will uh, use and develop its offers with uh, AMI, I'm sure of it. Uh, we are seeing what is being done on the market. Some, some of the uh, new ways of thinking of Tesla are uh, used by everyone in the old EOAMs. So we see how uh, e-selling e e or uh, e-business is uh, working and we try to, to see what is uh, the right thing to take from the competitors and to adapt it into a Citroen way. We want also the journey to be a Citroen journey. And it's, I think it's not the, the end of the dealership, but it's more like a, an evolution uh, with the, the new way of uh, consumption for the customers. We are trying to create our own AMI uh, customer experience and that's uh, already a, a big deal. All right, that's it for today. Back to you, Zach and Jesse. Now you know. Thank you so much, JP. That was fantastic reporting. Yeah. I mean, you know, we wanted to go cover it, <laughs> but we can't. So it's really, really astoundingly helpful to have people all around the world um, who can go cover this stuff and fantastic reporting. I have a question. So the doors on this, I think if you noticed, uh, the driver's side door opens one way and the passenger side door opens the kind of opposite, which I've never seen in a car before. Why'd they do that? Cheap. Cheapness. What? Why is it cheap? So it's the same door on both sides. Oh, so, right. I mean, if you were to put the same door in a house, it would always open the same direction. Oh. So that's what they were doing here. You'll also notice the front and the back plastic injection molded panels of the car are the exact same piece. So they didn't have to make a new mold, which saves you quite a bit of money. That's interesting. Yeah. Really smart in terms of reducing cost. And I think that that's, that's really an interesting way to go about making an electric car. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching Now You Know Clips. You can watch full episodes of Tesla Time News on Mondays and in-depths on Fridays. Just click the link down below to head over to the Now You Know channel.